Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month, our regular roundup of the shiniest, coolest and newest products, bikes, gadgets and gizmos to arrive here at Bike Radar HQ. As it's getting into the winter months here in the UK, we thought this episode we treat you to a bumper load of cold weather kit to keep you warm, dry and visible when braving the winter conditions. In this episode, Alex has Lupine's Alpha Light, which is very bright and also very expensive. If you've ever wanted to give your bike the spa clean it deserves, then Oscar will be showing the Bike Spa cleaning products from Silka, as well as his Gore-Tex winter cycling shoes. Ash will be chatting through his favourite winter road tyres, and Max will be showing off the new Gore waterproof cycling jacket. Finally, I'll be walking you through a bike from Canyon that is designed specifically for winter miles. Hopefully, that'll be enough to keep you warm and dry all the way until spring. Let us know the winter products that you couldn't live without. And as always, leave your thoughts about anything featured in the comments below. Boasting a whopping 7200 lumen output, the Lupine Alpha has enough power to match its rather fantastic 1080 euro price tag. As you'd hope, at this price, it's not short of tech, with its features stretching beyond the magical maximum output figure an 840 meter claimed beam throw. Lupine claims the Alpha's optics and 16 LEDs have been tuned to deliver impressive illumination on the trail. That's thanks to 22 degree and 18 degree lenses, which control their output. Although the sleek head unit is minimal looking, it hides Bluetooth smartphone connectivity, meaning Lupine's light control smartphone app can be used to change its output levels. It also takes advantage of that wireless connection to link to the included remote, which is known as Pepe. This acts as the primary control for the Alpha. Pepe's buttons change color depending on which mode is selected and how much battery charge is left. Mirroring Pepe's mode and charge indicator are sleek battery life and mode LED indicators on the head unit's rear, while the separate battery pack also has a traffic light style LED and an audible charge indicator. Cooling fins are integral to its design and help manage heat buildup, while the whole system is IP68 water and dust resistant and has an IK09 impact strength rating. A single mounting point attaches the head unit to the supplied 31.8 mm 17 gram bar mount or to the optional 35 bar mount and Velcro helmet mounts. All in, the Lupine Alpha weighed 735 grams on my scales. That's including mounts, cables, and the remote. Now, I've been testing this light, and unsurprisingly, its 7200 lumen output feels as powerful as it sounds. It has a super focused centralized spot where the area its light is projected onto is as bright as daytime, meaning no obstacle goes unseen. Its power is spread out to the periphery as well, where there's a massive amount of usable light projected to the site, improving context and line spotting potential. Its throw is just as impressive as the output, and at full power, fire roads and straighter trails are illuminated magnificently, quite literally as far as you can see. Backing up the immense power is the beam's hue. With the perfect balance of a yellow, green, white color, it makes the trails pop and come alive while still feeling natural to the eyes. In terms of functionality, I'm happy to report that reading the manual isn't a prerequisite to using the Alpha. The mode and battery indicators are simple to understand, and gauging how much charge is left and which output the light is in are easy and without doubt. Speaking of battery life, in the runtime test, the Alpha lasted for one hour and 35 minutes on full power. The Alpha is a massively impressive light, from its outright lumens, an incredible beam pattern, through to the LED's hue. Simple functionality, sleek design, and refined user experience. Please tell me what you think of the Lupine Alpha. Does this light have too much power, or are you in the brighter the better camp? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Winter is well and truly here, at least for us in the UK which means your bike is almost certainly going to get filthy. So today I've got something to help with cleaning your pride and joy. Silk has new bicycle spa range and gear wipes. I'll start with the bicycle spa 
It's a collection of four cleaning products with the usual obsessive attention to detail you'd come to expect of Silka. Many brands have a whole buffet of cleaning products for different purposes, but Silka says it wanted to have one collection for everything. According to Silka, it spent a year and a half developing the products. As is typical for the brand, the price may be high, but they ultimately last longer as you use less of it, and that could be a good value proposition. The new range comprises a drivetrain and brake cleaner, a bike wash, a graphene spray, and a waterless wash. Silka recommends first spraying the brake and drivetrain cleaner, which has a cinnamon scent. This is a non-aerosol, non-chlorinated solution, and Silka says it'll even work with your disc brakes, and can remove contaminants if they're squealing. The cleaner attacks dirt and turns a reddish purple when it's ready to be rinsed off, Silka says generally after three to five minutes. It's designed to target brake dust, road grime and oils but won't attack any wax in the paint of your frame or chain, nor will it leave any residue behind, unlike traditional degreasers. Step two is to use the bike wash, which Silka claims is the most highly concentrated soap in the market today that you can use with hand washing techniques. That essentially means in a bucket. The bike wash is also said to be safe if disc brakes and has a cherry scented smell. Like the drivetrain cleaner, dirt is encapsulated and lifted from your frame so it won't damage your paintwork. The final step is to use the Sweet Lime Margarita scented graphene spray wax by applying it onto a microfiber cloth and applying it to the frame. Silk advises leaving it for two to three minutes to dry and the brand says it will leave a white waxy film which you can then buff out with a towel. It's important to note that unlike the drivetrain cleaner and bike wash, Silka says to avoid getting this on your brakes and rotors. Silka recommends applying the graphene spray wax every three months to maintain the best finish. The Pina Colada smelling ceramic waterless wash is designed as an everyday top up after a ride. Spray it onto your bike, avoiding your brakes and drivetrain again, and then wipe away the slippery film with a microfiber towel and buff the frame to renew the shine. So how much does all this cost? The drivetrain cleaner and ceramic waterless wash retail for £36 or $30. The bike wash is £30 or $25. And the graphene spray wax is the priciest of the lot at £54 or $45. If you're after the entire collection, Silka offers a bundle at £135 or $130. What do you make of Silka's entry into the bicycle cleaning market? Would you spend the best part of £135 on four cleaning products? Let me know in the comments. Now let's move on to City Zero Gore 2, a winter specific road cycling shoe. Reminiscent of uh, Viking boots, they have a Gore-Tex membrane to repel water, yet still offer good breathability. City says the sole is carbon injected. That means the sole is predominantly nylon infused of carbon. The brand claims the sole is stiff enough to offer optimum power transfer and it features mountings for free bolt road cleats. There's also a reinforced heel cup, which City also says helps increase power transfer as well as reducing slippage. Rather than using a boa, City uses its own Techno Free Dial and a Velcro strap to close the shoe around your foot. We've reviewed other City shoes that use this dial and it's pretty intuitive to use. You simply lift the lever of the dial up and twist to tighten the shoe up. To release it, you press on the two spring-loaded release buttons while unwinding the shoe. The dial is also serviceable and replaceable. The heel pads are replaceable too, and City says they have tweaked the design to make the shoe easier to walk in, as well as reducing weight. So these shoes retail for £260 or $268. They only come in this monochrome black colour, and my size 45 weighs in 844 grams. What do you make of these shoes from City? Do you like to ride in a winter specific cycling shoe or do you prefer to use overshoes? Let us know in the comments. Thanks Oscar. My entry for Tech of the Month isn't a single product at all, but something everyone in the Northern Hemisphere should be thinking about at this time of year. Winter road tyres. As the nights draw in, temperatures drop and the rain falls. Now's the time to swap out your summer rubber for something with a little more toughness. Now, I love the speed and feel of a summer tyre, but when the roads are covered in hedge trimmings and flint and gravel and grime and other detritus, it's time to be pragmatic. So what do winter tyres have which summer tyres don't? Generally, they all feature tougher rubber compounds, greater puncture protection, 
more strength across the entire construction, and some even have special treads aimed at helping you to grip the road when it would rather you didn't. There are also the benefits of going tubeless to consider. A tubeless setup can protect you against punctures with sealant working to plug those holes when they happen. That said, you may prefer to stick to a clincher setup for the relative ease of swapping a tube out should the worst happen, relying upon the strength of tyre to see you through. Now, in front of me, I've got six tyres, all of which have landed at Bike Radar in the past week and will be put through their paces very soon. I'll focus on two of them briefly. Here, I have the Specialised Roubaix Pro, and this is the Continental Gator Skin. This Roubaix Pro is the 700 by 25 to 28 c model and is made from specialised Gripton compound. What's Gripton? It's their blend of synthetic rubber and silica compound, which the brands say maximises grip and dampens vibrations. Underneath the Gripton rubber is what specialised call Black Belt, which is designed to offer puncture protection without compromising speed. But how much did these tyres weigh? Let's find out on the Bike Radar Scales of Truth. 296 grams. Conti's Gator Skin, on the other hand, goes for greater durability over performance. It features a thick rubber compound plus the brand's tough Poly X Breaker puncture protection layer. An additional cut resistant Dura Skin layer lives underneath that, covering the entire body of the tyre. All in, they should be super tough and reduce the chances of a dreaded puncture. So these 28mm Gator Skins weigh in at. 272 grams. Now, neither of these tyres are tubeless compatible, but let me know if that bothers you in the comments. If you can't wait for all these reviews to hit, be sure to check out our Winter Tyre Buyer's Guide, which contains our top picks for the season. The link is in the description. Nothing makes me more sad than getting wetter than an otter's pocket while out on a winter ride, and therefore, a fully waterproof jacket is essential during the long winter months. When it comes to keeping dry and cheery, my choice is this Gauze Endura Jacket. It's a fully waterproof, wind resistant and lightweight piece of kit. There's even a hood that fits over your helmet and it fits over my large Met parachute. So if it fits over that, it will probably fit over most other helmets too. Like other coats, this comes with two elasticated drawstrings at the front and one at the back in case you need to draw in some slack to stop the wind from pulling the hood off mid-ride. There's also adjustable velcro straps on each sleeve to give a better fit around the wrists, helping to keep out the wet and cold breeze. The last adjustable party piece is another elasticated cord located on the inside bottom of the jacket if you feel like a snugger fit is needed. Speaking of the fit, the rear of the jacket is also slightly longer to protect your lower back from splashes or wind chill, and the elbows on the sleeves are also shaped for a more on-the-bike pedalling position. I've been using the Endure for a little while now, and I've found it very comfortable, all while keeping the chill out. Gore's biggest claim about this jacket, though, is of course its waterproof abilities, with a, and I quote, guarantees to keep you dry promise. Shall we test that? It works! Okay, I jest, but seriously, I've ridden in some pretty gross conditions, and this jacket does a really good job of keeping you dry, even in the foulest of weather. This is down to the Gore-Tex material used in its construction. According to Gore, this thin membrane has over 9 billion pores per square inch, and those individual pores are 20,000 times smaller than a single drop of water. What does this mean in simple terms? Well, it keeps rainwater out, but it's still ventilated and breathable. On our scales, the jacket weighs in at 272 grams and retails for 230 pounds, or the same again in dollars. It also comes in a variety of colors. Green, of course, being the best, in my opinion. What is your waterproof jacket of choice, though? Let us know in the comments below. Now it's getting darker and colder, here in the UK at least, you're going to want a bike that suits those conditions. So, for this episode, we have a Canyon Grail 7 AW. The Canyon Grail is something of a modern classic of the gravel bike world. It's a do-it-all, every-season, multi-train bike and comes ready for winter with mudguards, lights and knobbly, grippy tyres. I actually rode a Canyon Grail AL6 all of last year and wrote a long-term review on it, so if you want to see how I got on, have a look for the link in the description. Back to the Grail 7 AW and the frame is built with lightweight aluminium and sports a carbon fork. There's a large number of mounts on the frame for a variety of fittings. 
In fact, there's no less than three bottle mounts, perfect for carrying winter thermoses. It also comes with a waterproof top tube bag, which is good for storing mid-ride snacks. For those of you who like to stay warm and dry in the winter months, the Grail also has mudguard mounts and comes with full mudguards, Canyon Sea Light Fender, which give good coverage of the wheel. Built around the gravel-specific Shimano GRX 812 group set, the Grail comes in an 11-speed cassette and a 40-tooth one-by crank at the front. It has Shimano RX 600 hydraulic disc brakes, which should give you lots of stopping power in the wet. The Canyon Grail comes specced with DT Swiss gravel-specific wheels that are wrapped in 40mm Continental Terra Trail tyres, which have larger nobbles to give you more control on loose surfaces. Finally, with the long, dark winter months in mind, the Grail comes with the Lupine SL Nano AF light set. These are powerful lights with a 1110 lumen beam that should be more than enough power to keep you riding off-road in the dark winter evenings. They also have a daytime mode, meaning you should be easy to see on the winter commute. So what does all of this cost? Well, the Canyon Grail 7AW costs £1,999, and that's the same in euros. And that's quite a good price for all of the tech that's included. What do you think of the Canyon Grail AW? Do you have a winter bike or do you give your bike a winter makeover? Let us know in the comments. So there you have it. That's our winter specific tech of the month episode. What do you think? Is a thousand pounds worth it for a bike light? Are you going to rush out to get your bike clean with the silica spray? Or do you have any winter kit that you couldn't live without that we haven't mentioned? Let us know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon so every time we upload a video, you get a notification. And if you want to watch more from Tech of the Month, click on this video here.